So, nearby Nisha, she favourite Disney princess. I really like Mulan, one of my favourite films when I was younger. That's a very strong choice. It's pretty well known at this point that the monolithic super corporation known as Disney is more protective of its coveted Disney princess's brand than a man lowering himself into a bathtub is of his balls. So much so that the person behind the scene in Ralph Breaks the Internet where the pantheon of princesses hang out together was genuinely worried they'd be fired for even suggesting such an idea. That is probably the best scene in that film. Yeah, like Ralph Breaks the Internet is not a great sequel, I don't think. Um, I don't like how it strayed away from being about like video games and be to be more about internet culture because internet culture moves so quickly mm -hmm. that almost every single thing in that film is just dated now. Anything in media just get, goes out of date within like a month's time. Which is why the original uh, Wreck-It Ralph works so well because it's firmly rooted in like you know a very specific era of history and it allows them to evoke the nostalgia for that. Um, era. You can't really evoke nostalgia for things that were happening a year ago. <laughs> no. But, but with retro arcade games, you People, can. yeah, people have a lot of nostalgia for those, and that's part of the reason, like, Wreck-It Ralph was so successful. People were nostalgic mm -hmm. for those games, and then, like, they you know, they told a good story. And then Ralph breaks the internet. It's like, I said, the best part is when the princess has to hang out. And there were so many plans to do so much more stuff with Disney-related properties in that movie and they just never got around to doing it because Disney themselves did not want them to. Well they're quite strict aren't they when they come to the princesses because yes. that video we did where they're not allowed to look at each other on branding and on merchandise yep. and that sort of thing. And it's just the thing, it's like apparently behind the scenes it's just a, a nightmare to do anything with the brand. And as mentioned, the person who suggested the scene in Wreck-It Ralph where all the princesses hang out was worried they'd get fired for even daring to suggest the Disney princesses feature on screen at the same time. Do you have daddy issues? I don't even have a mom. Neither do we. And uh, like that film is full of just like, you know, it's Disney sucking its own dick. Like when they go to like, oh my Disney. And it's like, oh, here's everything related to Disney. There was a bunch of things that were pitched to appear in that scene that Disney never signed off on. My favourite one is that there was going to be a cameo from Kylo Ren. Really? Yes, and the cameo was going to have someone say he has daddy issues. Like, you know, he does have daddy, he has granddaddy issues realistically, but I still going to make a joke at his expense. Yeah. And Lucasfilm, and by extension Disney, were like, no, we don't want you to do that because the character of Kylo Ren is so serious and important, we feel like making fun of him would um, uh, detract from like, you know, the branding we've built around the character. It's like, if anything, that makes the character sound worse because you, you don't even want people to make fun of them. There's, like, there's nothing wrong with making fun of like characters like that. I think it's great when people can take the piss out of their own brands. Yes. It's great and it's funny. People like to see that sort of thing and it's memorable. And in regards to the Kylo Ren thing, it makes the characterization of Kylo Ren seem so much weaker that Lucasfilm and by extension Disney were so afraid that a single joke offhand would like ruin his entire characterization. It's like, well, he's not a good character, is he? And uh, I'd argue that like, the Disney princesses brand is one of the strongest Disney out. When you think Disney, you think the princesses. Yeah, instantly. And it's likely that a majority of people watching this, their favorite Disney movie is one that features a Disney princess. Do you have a favourite Disney princess? Uh, Mulan. Fat oh, Mulan. nice. Yeah. I, I just like the song. <laughs> like, I'll make a man out of you. He's just like my, it's my favourite Disney song, so by extension, the character it's about. That song is on my uh, gym playlist. It's on mine because... as well. <laughs> right, so who is it that suggested this amazing scene? Uh, well, that was a lady called Pamela Ribbon, or Ribbon. I'm not sure how you pronounce the last name, but um, she was the screenwriter on Moana. And like many people, she found herself thinking, if I was a Disney princess, what kind of Disney princess would I be? And she came to the conclusion that she wouldn't be like any of the Disney princesses currently featured in the Disney princess pantheon, because she'd be the one who wants to wear a hoodie. And no Disney princesses wore hoodies. Yeah. And she liked the idea of like Disney princesses in a casual setting. And that's what I like, set the scene. And then when she was working on Ralph Breaks the Internet and they realised they had an opportunity to be, to be quite meta, be quite self-referential, she thought back to the idea of, Disney princesses in a casual setting. And she thought, well, we've got Vanellope, and she's a princess, but also a president. But she also, like, you know, wears a hoodie and jeans. And then she sat down in the writer's room and they were like um, uh, brainstorming ideas and they were thinking like, well, there's a lot of common tropes with Disney princesses. Like a lot of them get kidnapped. A lot of them like uh, have to be rescued by a strong male figure, which is a joke they make in the film. Yeah. And then, wouldn't it be great if the Disney princess all met and then talked about this? Because they never get a chance to interact. But while she was really excited to open up that Disney toy box and play with these action figures, she was in the back of her head constantly thinking, oh, this is one of the biggest brands they have. They are so protective of it. They might fire me for daring to suggest this idea. Because I mean, like we said, they're not, they weren't allowed to look at each other. 
our merchandise. Yeah. So having them interact together in a room is it's a big, bold move. <laughs> it is, yes. And then to have them in a casual setting as well, to yeah. uh, drop the very carefully, meticulously crafted facade um, Disney has maintained for all the princesses. I believe they got every original actress to reprise their role who'd voiced the Disney princess, except for the ones who died. And I think that's Cinderella and Snow White. And in regards to Snow White, um, Ribbon herself stepped in to do the voiceovers um, during pre-production. Her attempt was so good, they just left it in the film. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> so, she's like, oh, I guess I can do a pretty decent Snow White. Like, oh, 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 oh. Like, yeah. I can't do it, but she could. <laughs> And then when they did that, they went, well, that's good enough, let's just leave that in. That's like um, The Incredibles with Brad Bird, mm. where I think the voice of Edna Mode is Brad Bird, the director, and that's the voice he thought of for the character. And they went, well, we'll just leave that in. That's <laughs> like best character. No, just Edna Mode. And Guess. And Guess. Like, you knew it, it's the best thing, <laughs> just the machine gun. Edna Mode. <gasps> and Guess. So were there any other hurdles on, in getting the Disney princesses into one scene? There was, yes, and the most obvious one is that all the Disney princesses hail from movies with wildly different art styles. Like There is like a cohesion between them in the fact they are princesses and they all wore dresses, but like Mulan, for example, comes from a 2D animated movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, compares like Moana, a 3D animated movie. How do you put them in the same shared space, but also make them like congruous with the Wreck-It Ralph art style? Yeah. So they had to figure out a way to create a sense of cohesion between all of those characters, while also making sure they didn't stray too far away from the original artistic vision from the original film they hailed from. And it's that thing of like, it sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Like, it was apparently like it's a complete minefield to try and get across of like, okay, uh, we could put Mulan in and make a 3D, but it's like, what does the back of Mulan's head look like? And in addition to the arguments of what the characters would look like, you had the argument of like, well, how would they act? How would they interact in these scenes? Because whilst in all of the Disney princesses original movies, you see how they'd act like Mulan, you know how she's gonna act when like, you know, a Mongolian warlord is trying to fight her. Yeah. But how would she act on just you know a casual conversation with friends? Because you never see the character do that. Every single line of dialogue and every action had to be signed off on by someone at Disney. Like mm -hmm. there is nothing in that scene that was not gone over with a fine tooth comb. Like every hair flick every just like you know gesture was something that someone had to sign off on and that's one of the reasons they brought back the original voice actresses to ask them what do you think the character would do in this scene yeah. because like you're the person who's like embodied the character so you're the person who can speak best to how they would act in this moment so i imagine that scene was probably the one that took the longest to absolutely yeah animate it, go through make sure everything's perfect and the reason i like that is because that means someone at disney signed off on cinderella using her own glass slipper as a shiv just a <laughs> Smashes is like, who are you? No, that means like someone at Disney signed off on that. That sounds like something Cinderella would do, yeah. Whoa, whoa, ladies, I can explain. There was a lot of problems in the sense that, well, some of these characters, we don't know what parts of their body look like. For example, the character Cinderella, you never see her ears in the original film. Do you not? Nope. If you go back and you watch Cinderella, you never see her ears. I have a picture of Cinderella right here, look. You think you can see her ears, but they're not drawn. Ooh. You, they never drew her ears, ever. Because she either has them covered up by her hair or a band, or when she's drawn with her hair down, they didn't draw her ears. It's like, what is it? Um, there's, is it Mandela Effect? Something where, where you, yeah. someone will show you a picture or a logo or something and you're like, there's yeah. like a difference. You remember something different, like the Berenstein yeah. Bear Effect, the Mandela Effect. Yes, yeah, so you remember like, well, surely I've seen Cinderella's ears. Like, no, you never see her ears in that um, original film. And that's something like, because for the scene in Ralph Breaks the Internet, they had to show her ears, but they've never seen them before. So that's just ask someone at Disney, what do Cinderella's ears look like? And like, we don't know. But you can show us, like, you know, your render of her with ears and we'll tell if we like it or not. And then you've got the problem of like, how tall is each Disney princess? Because they have no officially listed canon heights. That's yeah. Sick. And do you know how they solve that issue? How? <laughs> they have to get Disney to send them every officially licensed um, Disney princess doll they could find and compare the heights that way. Aren't they all the same size though, the dolls? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So they just made them all the Pretty same size. Like... But they still had to check that, but they had to get like official Disney figurines and um, uh, compare the heights to one another. But it got even more ridiculous when they tried to put them in casual outfits. Yeah, I think like, that's another great part of the scene is the outfits they're wearing. Because I mentioned earlier, yes. um, quotes and the uh, pictures on the t-shirts. Yeah. They're usually like Easter eggs and stuff like that. Yeah, and there are so many just subtle Easter eggs in that um, uh, scene. For example, if you go back and watch this, you'll notice that Ariel in her casual Friday outfit is not wearing shoes. 
And that's because the character would naturally still be obsessed with having feet. And for example, Elsa is wearing a sweater. <laughs> but Elsa, like, what's the most famous line? The cold never bothered me anyway. Yeah, she's cold. <laughs> yeah, so that's the idea. They thought like Elsa would be quite sarcastic and would wear a sweater. And it says on it, just let it go. Yes. <laughs> and one of the things that always baffled me about this scene is that Disney now owns these casual Friday versions of their princesses. Mm -hmm. Why do they not have dress down days at Disneyland? Oh, yeah. Just they have, like, the official Disney princess actresses, like the, uh, what they call now, the castmates. Yeah. And they're the people, they also brought castmates in to inform the characterization of each character in those scenes. Because for people who don't know, Disney castmates who play characters such as Elsa, for example, go through regimented instruction on how the character would act in any given moment. Yeah. And when they're interacting with the public, they have to, like, well, how would um, Princess Elsa act in this moment? They have to know that. And I've always been baffled that they don't have dress down days at Disneyland where they all wear those outfits instead. Yeah, that'd be so good. Could you imagine that? Like, that'd be such a money spinner. Yeah. For, like all those like little girls and stuff like that who can't afford like a full um, Disney princess outfit or you something get, like, like that. The t-shirts. If you can just wear a t-shirt and then you go up and like Elsa's wearing the t-shirt too. Yeah. Oh, that'd be like, so that's so sweet. I'm baffled that Disney don't do it. Maybe they thought oh, Wreck-It Ralph is just a one-off. Oh, Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll let it go, <laughs> as Elsa would say. There is uh, one more detail about Ralph Breaks the Internet that's, uh, I have to mention, it's because um, uh, someone asked um, one of the people working on the film, like, well, Disney exists in the Wreck-It Ralph universe, correct? Yes, it does. But Wreck-It Ralph is a Disney movie. Does that mean Wreck-It Ralph does not exist in the Wreck-It Ralph universe? I mean, yeah, sadly. Wait, what? <laughs> so, Wreck-It Ralph is a Disney movie. Right, yeah. And they go to Oh My Disney where they encounter Disney characters, but no one there knows Wreck-It Ralph or Vanellope von Schweetz. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so in the Wreck-It Ralph universe, Wreck-It Ralph doesn't exist. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can kind of see now why that scene itself was quite short overall. It was a very short segment of the film, and I can see why, because it took fucking forever to it sort did, out. It did, yes. And uh, you can draw a comparison here to the original Wreck-It Ralph, where you know, the scene where Ralph is in just the, the bad guys meeting, Yep. And it's just, <laughs> there's got all those video game characters there. That was apparently a fucking ball ache to do because similarly, every rights holder for the characters in those scenes complained endlessly about how their character was portrayed. And there was apparently a metaphorical dick measuring contest between Sega and Nintendo behind the scenes where when they sent in just like early previs work of that scene, Nintendo were like, uh, we don't think Bowser drinks coffee like that. So do you want Bowser to drink it? So they had yeah. to like, they sent notes in Bowser would drink his coffee and they said, okay, well, fuck it. Like, okay, how would he drink his coffee? Here's some artwork. Bowser drinks his coffee. Okay, now he's drinking coffee. So <sighs> Bowser looks a bit small. Uh, we definitely think Bowser's bigger than Dr. Robotnik. Okay, we'll make him bigger. Send, so obviously, every time you make a change, you have to send it to everyone. Send it to Sega. Sega's like, oh, we think Robotnik could be a bit bigger than that. Oh my and God. And then they send it to Capcom and Capcom's like, well, Zangief's not small. We should make Zangief bigger. And it got to the point where every character except Ralph was fucking massive because all of the people who held the rights did not want their characters to look smaller than the other one. And eventually they just said, fuck it, they're all the same size. <laughs> they're all... <laughs> but but the... Didn't they have the uh, Pac-Man ghost? Because yeah. they're not big. I don't think Bandai Namco cared either. But <laughs> Nintendo and Sega kept sending notes of like, make Bowser, make Eggman bigger. I'm going to have to look, look back at that and just see the size comparison. <laughs> I think they made them all exactly the same size. And that's one of the reasons why they decided to just create original characters for that film. Because can you imagine having to do that for literally every interaction? That's why all the, all the cameo scenes are dead short. That's why. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking faff. <laughs> it was a faff. Yeah, like I said, this is not how Bowser would drink a cup of coffee. Okay, how would he drink coffee? Not like that. Do you have any reference material we can use? No. So how was he drinking it wrong? I imagine he just held it in his hand and took a sip. Like, yeah, so, how else do you drink coffee? So if we put a clip into that scene, the way Bowser's drinking coffee is officially how Nintendo think Bowser would. Even though coffee doesn't exist in the Mario universe, it's how he would apparently. I'm just like, imagining, like, I can't remember exactly how he does it in the scene, but... Like he holds it like two fingers like that. Oh, holds it two fingers. Oh, so if it's just him, him drinking it normally, it's like, well, what were they doing in the first place? And I have moment of clarity. If Zangief is good guy, we'll crush man's skull like Sparrow's egg between thighs. <laughs> 